That's a climate change boy. And we're back with another episode of Bones and Toes. We're here with you on this day, this rainy, cold day in February. I was waiting to hear the thing turn on. I was like, well, I don't have any sound. I didn't turn my fucking headphones on. Well, now you got sound now, don't you? Not a professional. <laughs> Not a professional <laughs> podcast. No. But now we're here with you today, and uh, our topic for today is going to be climate change. Ooh. Now, before we get into that, though, I think we're going to probably talk about a few things that's going on in the news. Part of the reason why we wanted to do this episode was because the Green New Deal came out last week. Finally watched stuff about it this morning, looked into it. And it, what it, it's exactly what I said, right? It's hot, it's hot air. Well, what's terrible about it is that the people that support it, the attorneys that are advising... I'll blurt all those out, by the way. So we can just say the name, we'll blurt it out. Mm -hmm. So the attorneys that are supporting the New Green Deal are being confronted with things like, what about the section in it where it says that you'll still pay people that don't want to have a job, part of this New Green Deal? And they're like, no, we didn't say that. No, you did say that. It's right here. No, yeah. no, we didn't. That's not us. That's something else. He's like, okay, what about uh, getting rid of all fossil fuels? And I forget what the time frame was. 15 years, maybe? Yeah, it's supposed to be like 20. It's some... Like, even most people who are about climate change are saying, like, none of this is going to happen because yeah. you're, you've set the timetable way too fucking soon. It's for so this silly, shit. though. He's like, uh, well, well, that's not what we meant. We're not going to prohibit uh, fossil fuel usage. We're just going to make it obsolete. He's like, okay, so how are you going to do that? He's like, well, high speed rail. We're going to have high speed rail everywhere. So, what about planes? You're going to have a high speed rail from somewhere in the United States or to Hawaii? What are we looking at? You know? This sounds like some Agenda 2030 shit. It's exactly what it is. Because, like, think about it like this. If they're like, oh, well, we shouldn't rely on fossil fuels to get people, to tra like, transported from point A to point B or to their jobs or whatever. But at the same time, it's like, I know for a fact they ain't building no fucking high-speed rail uh, for me to go to work. No. no. Ergo, I'm still going to have to use my car, which relies on fossil fuels, well, once they change to go it, to work. Like, they have it over... over uh over in Europe, they'll probably just change our fuel to like liters, and then make it more expensive. Yeah, so it's like two thirty a gallon right now be six six dollars a liter. Yeah, so basically, like, so then people are forced to move closer to the cities in order to use this transport yeah. system. I don't know if no one's if you guys are relatively new to the Bones and Tubs podcast, you could check out our show previously on Agenda Twenty One, Agenda Twenty Thirty. Yeah, get a break, you know, browed idea. It was a while ago, we talked about that one a long time ago. Yeah, that's what this is. This is the newest. Newest form of that, trying to cattle human beings into large population centers and just make a lot of the United States and world uninhabited. Sounds like Soylent Green. I mean, that's yeah. basically what they do in Soylent Green. That's fine. Like, Agenda 2050 is going to be like, <sighs> we want to make a product that everybody can eat that's readily available, and you find out it's just decreased bodies. They're getting close. I mean, the scientists in Japan figured out a way to make steaks out of shit, so... There you go. There's that. And I really liked the... Uh, the propaganda that's going around about this new Green Deal that we talked about earlier in the week. Yeah. The bargerman had uh, said he thought it was real, and I called you as a phone a friend. Yeah. And we looked it up. But they were floating around the idea that people, as part of this new green initiative, were collecting their urine, putting it in the sun for a period of seven, like three to seven days or something. And then maybe, using, yeah, using it to make coffee. Using it for tea and coffee. Which, that's that was all facetious, but... The fact that, like, I think the thing you got to take from that is is the fact that a lot of the stuff in the new Green Deal is so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. That uh, something saying something like that or adding something like that doesn't seem as far fetched because of the things that they're saying in it. I mean, a lot of their stuff has to do with basically uh, moving towards. We're talking, and you know, it it, it definitely shares a. It deserves the name, the Green New Deal, simply because, you know, it's talking about basically uh, uh, ensuring employment for everybody. So anybody that wants a job can have a job. Uh, $15 an hour is a part of it, minimum wage. And, uh, you know, of course, all the green initiatives, getting rid of air travel, rail travel being the, the preferable choice, and so on and so forth. I mean... The thing is, is I've seen a lot of people, a lot of people who are about climate change come out and be like, you've discounted nuclear energy in this, and that's one of the cleanest versions 
of energy around. Like, this isn't the 1970s. This isn't fucking Three Mile Island or fucking Chernobyl. Like, we've, you know, the technology has been updated. And as long as you're smart enough not to put it on a fault line like the Japanese did with Fukushima, I think you'll be okay. Come on. Just looking at the national debt clock here, because it brought up another question in my head. This uh, Green New Deal would be the most expensive thing we've ever done. Mm-hmm. As a country, where would the money come from? <laughs> what do you think? Well, I know where it'll come from. Well, I mean, they want to tax millionaires at seventy percent. It'll come. It'll so, come I mean, from taxation being theft, but it'll also be printed out of nothing. Cause it's fiat, right? So that would cause massive inflation. And I wonder if that ties into the thing we talked about a few shows ago, where they were talking about uh, they had two options: one, let the economy collapse, or two, something like a fifty or eighty trillion dollar stimulus. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's a goddamn fifty or eighty trillion dollar yeah. stimulus we're looking at right there. But that's what got us into our main topic today. But there's a few other things I wanted to touch on. Uh, this just happened today. Notorious Mexican crime boss El Chapo has been found guilty of his crimes. Really? Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's gonna happen now? See, that's what I'm wondering because there's a lot. They, I mean, he was found guilty of everything. They didn't. I mean, we're talking about all sorts of shit. Yeah. And. uh so it makes me wonder if he's going to try to cop a deal and name names. I mean, he's already named some names. It's already come out that, like, basically the uh, national government of Mexico is just rife with corruption. I mean, we could have – I mean, you didn't have to Imagine find out from shock. him that, like, you know, I mean, he escaped from two federal Mexican prisons. Like, how uh, how does the most notorious fucking drug boss of our time escape twice from prison? He's just really slippery. Without the – without – there being like literal me- federal help doing it. Corruption, yeah. I mean, he d- he had a tunnel dug underneath the prison that was big enough to uh, accommodate a, m- a motorbike to be driven through well, it. Well, he's not going to walk. Exactly. But <laughs> you see what I mean, though? Like, uh, these are the levels of corruption we're dealing with. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that is part of some sort of plea to reduce his sentence or maybe get himself moved closer to home. He will start naming names of U.S. politicians that have received money from him. I sure hope so. That'd be awesome. Yes. Or that'd be, that'd be great. Or he'll end up having a heart attack or something. Yeah. That's probably what's going to happen. So. Dead men tell no tales. There's that. And now, I guess, another thing that I saw just about 20 minutes before we started the show. Apparently, the Senate has found no evidence of any collusion between Trump and Russia. There was, the there was Russian collusion, though. That's a fact. Oh, yeah? Hillary Rodden Clinton. Oh, yeah. We know that. Uh, yeah. We ran in one deals, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, scrubbed emails, all that stuff. Clinton Foundation. But they, uh, they just need to turn the microscope in a different way. I don't like any politicians, but let's, so, let's quit talking about the Trump thing. Now the now that the Senate... I just want to get over this real quick. Yeah. Now that the Senate has come out and said, we found no evidence of it. Mueller's good. That doesn't stop Mueller from continuing his investigation. How long is he going to do this for? Well, see, that's the thing. I think, I think they're trying to ride this wave into the 2020 election. Jesus wept. I'm, I, I'm serious. I highly doubt that by the election of November 2020, they will have closed the case yet. Mm. But I did read an article that basically said that politicians are afraid to talk about it. Because well, people who are running for president are afraid to talk about it because they're afraid basically like it's it's hedging hedging an unsure bet, and they probably know that nothing happened. Yeah. Because the thing is, if something had happened, I'm pretty sure they probably would have figured it out by now. Yeah, it would have already snapped. They would have snapped that bear trap. Like you know, considering his, I mean, I'm not you know, we all know I'm not a Trump train guy. Just but, a chaos boy. Yeah, but we all know that you know his phones were tapped during the election and stuff like that. Yeah. So if they couldn't find collusion then, how are they going to find it now? They're not going to. You know? I watched that video that uh, we were told about yesterday. Just not related, but it is Trump-related. Trump's given a speech in uh, the, one of the magical offices that they mm-hmm. speak out of. Yeah. And he's surrounded by three Jesuit uh, Catholic priests. Hmm. One of them is wearing a pendant, or it's a necklace, I guess. They got like a Rick Ross music video. Yeah. You know, gold chain, big cross. Yeah. Angel on the cross instead of a Christ figure. Huh. It's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, I watched it. It was about 15 minutes long, and then I sent him a message, and I was like, not shocked. Yeah. Lucifer, I get it. Yeah. Whatever. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to sweat it. 
I mean, should should we spread it? Uh, they also played a song of the Catholic priest singing a song to Lucifer in the church. That's fine. Yeah, yeah no, that's cool, too. Listen, just because I don't speak Latin, it's none of my goddamn business what you do. Yeah. Yeah, other than that, though, I don't really think uh, there's anything else to talk about. No. Unless you got something. No, just the, you know, the deck clock kind of shocked me again every time I look at it. I mean, it's got to shock you every time. USA Day Clock. I hate to work. break it to you. Yeah, 21, almost 22 trillion. I saw one uh, person who's running in 2020 has decided that one of her big platforms is that uh, there should be a $100 billion allocation to uh, the African-American community as reparations for slavery. Can you guys hear my eyes rolling? $100 billion. That's a lot of, that's a lot of like, not their money to allocate. Well, it's easy to do when you're a thief. You're stealing things via yeah. taxation. I mean, don't don't get this mixed up. It's not like I'm saying slavery was a good thing. No, it wasn't. Never has been. No. Never still is. Especially it wasn't when they did it to the Irish. Yeah. But well, that's here to there. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna split hairs with that shit. What do you what do you mean? We all know what it is, you know? I'm just saying. But uh stirring the pot, you know. Yeah, I I, I hear you. It's a there. low medium heat. Yeah, Just stirring it up. Yeah, mix it. Make sure it doesn't scald. You, you know? don't want to. You don't want shit scalding on the bottom of that pot. Yeah, that's gonna be hard to clean it up. Yeah, but uh, but no, nah, I I just thought that was kind of a weird thing to run on. You know what I mean? It's not though, really. I mean, we're watching Black Panther movies, fictional movies for Black History Month. I mean, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's just a sign of the times. Yeah, but nah. So on to the main topic of the day. Climate change. Changing climate. So, before we get started into the, the meat of this episode, I just wanted to put a light disclaimer on this before we get started. I'm sure there's some of our listeners out there that are outright climate uh, people who deny that climate change uh, is a thing. They do not believe it at all. They think it's all hokum and, uh, and whatnot. But uh, just before we get started, I just want to let you know, as the Buzz and Tubs podcast, we believe in climate change you cue the applause but and this is where the asterisks come in i don't think we don't think they're using the exact uh, uh, precise science that should be used to decide these things i'll say it in a more distilled version if you want yeah go ahead i believe in climate change i don't believe in man-made climate change climate has always changed it's what it does we've had histories in climate before in the climatological record where, you know, as far north as northern Europe, we were growing grapes at one time. Well, I mean, this is the thing I take from it is, is like from that video from the Sus- Suspicious Observer. There, We have our part to play in this. For sure. There's, I mean, there is definitive evidence that we're not helping no, anything. But we've looked at it in the past and talked about it before. Like some of the most important human issues that we have control over, we're not even looking at. Like nuclear fucking testing. Well, we find out they tested something like almost, oh, yeah. almost 3,000. A retraction from an, a former episode. Uh, I, I had assumed there, there was only a couple dozen nuclear detonations on the planet. Uh, I was grossly wrong. Anybody out there listening to actually fact check that? We were both shocked by the amount. Uh, over 2,000? Like 2,300, yeah. yeah. Uh, nuclear silly. detonations have been made on the planet. That we know of. So there's that. You know, that's kind of a big fucking deal. Especially if you're talking a, a median fucking... Half life of 144,000 years for the nuclear radiation. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that hasn't affected us at all or the planet. No. Uh, pouring massive amounts of things into the ocean and waterways. Yeah. Uh, I would say, I mean, like, because you have to, like, you can't sit here and say, like, we're not affecting things because there's a goddamn, like, continent's worth of fucking plastic in the goddamn ocean. Yeah. Like, just floating there it's terrible we're we're hauling in fish that have plastic inside like embedded in their fucking bodies because they've been eating it Mm -hmm. like this can't be good we all know that plastic isn't really like something that we should be eating or ingesting well you know just to to fucking tarantino it like we always will but if we had just went with hemp the first time none of this would have happened i'm a full-fledged conservationist i believe in preservation there's no reason why you shouldn't be a good steward that's it yeah that's about being a good steward proper stewardship Keeping things clean. Don't doing be, things responsibly. Don't be one of those fucking idiots that drives a Prius and flicks a cigarette butt out the window. But you I'll know? be damned if they're going to put this at the foot of the common man. No. It's funny that all the things that they, they could complain about, that they could effectually change, uh, what they chose to pick was something that they could tax. 
mm. carbon emissions. Yeah. So you've got, you know, the, the fear-based propaganda from Al Gore. What was his movie called back in the day? An Inconvenient Truth. Yeah, didn't it predict that we would already be underwater? Yeah, by 2011 or okay, something. Okay, so that. he's seven years behind on that. Yeah. But he got in a corporation with another fellow whose last name is Blood, and you can't make that shit up. Blood and Gore <laughs> were the uh, two officiators of that corporation. <laughs> and they had secured, or were trying to secure... Some sort of carbon credit system where countries would buy carbon credits from them. Ew. Like you're trying to tax your... W- that sounds like a scheme. It's I'm all, sorry. It's all a fucking scheme. Like I said, you, you didn't pick anything th- that's real, right? Yeah. You're not talking about Fukushima still to this day leaking hundreds of thousands of gallons of radioactive water into the ocean. You're not talking about massive fish dives. You're not talking about 5G. You're not talking about... Birds dropping out of the sky. Yeah. You're not talking about rising cancer rates due to any of these things. You're not talking about the uh, massive island of plastic. You're not talking about you're not nuclear talk- testing. You're not talking about fucking poisoning our fucking drinking, like, like f- poisoning our fucking water reserves with your fucking dump-offs and shit like that. Like, not, that's some real shit. You're not talking about fucking with the, the biodome in the way of, like, genetically modified crops. Yeah. Fucking with the genome. We're not everything. talking about fucking bee, the the fucking bee die off, which is going on. Massive bee die off, and being like, "Ooh, what are the bees dying off?" They're covering up all these things while they chose the one thing that we all do, we all take a part in, and they can tax you for it. I call bullshit. Yeah, that's you know, cue the applause. Mm. Yeah. Yes, well, mm. we love you too. Yeah, I just think it's too it's too it's too fucking simple, and. I would like to take your attention away from the Bones and Thugs podcast for a moment. Uh, let's see. This guy does it a thousand times better than I'll ever do it. Oh, man. This dude's a genius. And I've been listening to him for a few years. He's a fellow Ohioan. Oh, really? Used to be an attorney, I believe. Quit his job as an attorney. Became a solar scientist fellow type. He nice. got a fucking uh, rolling solar observation thing. It's like an RV. Yeah. Crowdfunded. Hmm. Goes around the country. Now he works with, uh, not a straight answer, NASA scientists. But he predicted a relationship between the sun and earthquakes. He has an app out that predicts earthquakes in an area with like 80% accuracy, 85% accuracy. Which, could still things considered, that's more accurate than most of your normal weather forecasts. Right. He just had his, his method proven through statistician, and it's been peer-reviewed. Check out Suspicious Observers, all one word, on YouTube. Check him out. The video I would like the video I would like for you to watch before continuing with our show, if you go to Suspicious Observers' YouTube channel, look for the video titled Facts, Part 1, Climate Change. It's eight minutes long. It's very short. Good. I recommend Parts 1 through 3. But anyway, uh, he mentions in that that there is the IPCC, International Panel for Climate Change. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. So it's a group of scientists, global effort, to prove or whatever what's causing the climate change. Yeah. And what had happened was all of them were supposedly at a consensus, right? Mm-hmm. We're not even, I'm not even yet talking about climate gate and all that shit. Yeah. Like he says in his video, if you just take the information for what it is, say the scientists didn't make any errors, say their math was 100% on point, and that's what our opinion is. Yeah. Or his opinion, whatever. Uh-huh. The, the information that they were given before they were given a problem to solve was flawed in itself. They only accounted the sun into climate change at a ratio of 0.01%. And even then, it only was... The relationship of the sun with the upper atmosphere. Yes. It didn't talk about any of the other, like, however many fucking modalities of climate coupling there could be, cosmic rays or any of that shit. Yeah. And any time <clears throat> that they had, like, solar maximum activity with massive solar flares or CMEs or whatever they were, uh, the data had shown it knocked down. So they deliberately dumped it down. Uh-huh. So all of the climate change data then could not be pointed at the sun. It had to be pointed at human beings. So basically... The math was, I mean, it's like he said in the video, the math was right. The, basically, it was like solving an algebra problem, right? Right. They, they had the answer. They had one element, and then they had to add another element to figure what, solve for X, right? Yeah. And, st- and, but the problem is, is that they were given fault, they were given flawed information from the get go. So, to solve for X, 
brought them to the conclusion that it had to be us that was causing the majority of the problems. Right. When in reality, if you actually change the problem, you come to find out it's not really like we have our role to play in it, but it's not as important as like what's going on way beyond our control. Right. It's just uh it to me it's collusion in the way of them trying to prove something that they want proven to implement their 2020 2030 agenda. Mhm. Uh, globalist bullshit while taxing us all to death. Just another little wing of that agenda 2030. I really enjoy the flatulence tax. Yeah, right. So as if farmers didn't have it hard enough with all these global trades that we've got. You know, we get most of our beef from fucking Brazil and shit like that. Let's tax cow farts. Let's tax cow farts. I would like to take you back in history. I'm sure you've seen the pictures. The uh, expansion west, Mm -hmm. right? When the west was wild. Need to be tamed by them white boys. Would it be a wild, wild west? I would say so. I'll, uh, don't, you know. don't make me get a copyright strike. I'll, uh, I'll do it. Hello, Will Smith. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> yeah. This uh, video. Will... I'm gonna get the email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Did we get one on the last episode? <laughs> wait, wait. What was on the last one? Uh, that song by Young Buck. I don't think so. No. Fantastic. They oh. didn't catch that one. They caught Carmen San Diego. Yeah, well we <laughs> used the whole song. Yeah. But they did not catch they they did not catch <laughs> Young Buck. Yeah, I'm not gonna say the title because I'm white. But uh anyway, there goes that. We're not gonna be able to monetize this video. Yeah. But anyway, uh picture in your mind the wild, wild west. Uh not the one with robot spiders, but the real wild, wild west. <laughs> yeah. Picture No robot spiders. Picture white people, horses, you know. Drunks, bar yeah. fights, Chinese railroad workers, Native Americans. Yeah. You know? Yeah, all that. Well, how many pictures exist of like the fucking piles of dead bison? Yeah. And I mean piles. <laughs> they fucking. They would kill the shit out of those fucking things. If, if there's one thing I learned about the Wild Wild West <laughs> is that buffalo are really easy to kill. Apparently. They like. I think they made fun of it on The Simpsons one time or something. Like. There was some show, like, they basically found out, like, it takes nothing, like, I think somebody just, like, threw a rock at one and it fucking killed over. <laughs> yeah. Like, apparently, buffalo are just super easy to kill. Yeah. So, I only say that to say this, like, take take it back a step a little bit further, you know, yeah, same area, the Wild West, but pre, you know, Chinese uh, slave labor, pre-drunken bar fights, pre-white men, bison are fucking everywhere. Rome. Like the buffalo. They're f- fucking everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Our fucking current cattle population on the planet probably is like 3% of what the bison just roaming around shitting and farting was. <laughs> so don't fucking tell me that controlled fucking farming, which has to be done for proper animal stewardship, is a goddamn problem that needs to be taxed. Mm, can we address something else right now? Just yeah. get this. Can we just address this elephant in the room when it comes to this whole climate change debate? First of all, man, if I'd have known there was an elephant in here, I would have taxed that bitch. Yeah, right. Because he's probably farting like a motherfucker. Oh, shit. The green, the green footprint or climate footprint in this room must just be the climate. I don't even want to know what the carbon footprint of an elephant is. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> so. Like, if we're going to, we want to, like, it seems like a lot of this climate change shit, we love, like, especially just Western civilization itself. Well, we just love to self-flagellate, don't we? Yeah. And, like, blame, like, the majority of on us. When I know for a goddamn fact that the shit that's going on in Asia right now is off the fucking chain. Yeah, for sure. Like, that's real pollution. Yeah. Like, they're straight up, like, there's parts of China and India that are solely, like, dedicated to just burning electronics. Yeah. Like they get like hordes of like old computer monitors and shit like that and they just burn it all. And like I know from personal experience what happens when you burn a fucking computer monitor, the shit that comes out of that thing. Acrid. Acrid and fucking demonic. Yeah. Like fucking crazy fucking neon green flames shooting out the tube and natural. all sorts of it's, shit, it's man. It's natural. Like, it's organic. So, like, and imagine, if you will, a fucking mountain-sized heap of a fucking pile, computer monitors just fucking smoldering. It's like a modern-day bison burn, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's electronics instead of dead bison. Like, it, you know, and people wonder, like, you see, like, whenever you see, like, and now, see, now I'm going off the rails all, all the way. You, like, see, like, half the time, it seems like any time there's, like, crazy conjoined twins or, like, kids born with extra limbs and shit, it's, yeah. like, in these parts of the world, it's, like, in India and shit, and it's, like, why the fuck does this keep happening in India? 
I don't know, probably because you're burning fucking crazy electronics and fires and melting plastic and shit. Like, mm. yeah. Go over to the Middle East and uh, for one of our previous episodes we talked about with Dr. Doug Hurdy, where they would, you know, they move their base or they'd move out somewhere and they'd have to go somewhere else. Instead of taking their shit with them, they just burn it. Yeah. Jeeps, trucks, fucking <laughs> computers, fucking buildings. They just burn it all, you know? Yeah. Fuck it. I mean,. Like, so, I mean, yeah, we, we have our role to play. But the thing is, is, like, I know for a fact. There's ways to do it that don't involve Agenda 2030. Yeah. There's ways to do it that don't involve you being taxed out of living in a rural area into a fucking mega city. Yeah. Don't forget to give up your guns when you get put in that goddamn city, too. We got to keep crime down, of course, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just think it's, I'm not even that smart. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know if you feel the same way about yourself. I'm not a scientist. I'm not I'm not super brilliant, but I can see the writing on the wall. I know when you're trying to make me a slave. Listen. I know when you're trying to tax me. I'm not a smart man, but when I go to the car dealership, I know what that car dealer is trying to do when I'm trying to just buy a car. I get it. Yeah. You're right. trying to make money. I get it. So you're going to try to... F- you, you All you see me as is some sort of mark. Some sort of teat that needs sort to be of, milked. Some sort of little pigeon some that little just <laughs> needs to be exploited. He's a pigeon with a dick, and if you jerk the dick off, it shoots money out. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like, I get it. Science. I'm just a consumer. Right. Right? I have no fucking uh, self-autonomy whatsoever. No. Nope. Go ahead and exploit me as much as you can. Take me, uh, take me for all my paycheck, daddy. Yeah. Tread on snack. Yeah. Man. But mm. it, it, that's the thing. Like, if it wasn't for the fact, like, I, I, I distance myself from climate change folks, it would because, like, the people that are running are so fucking gross about it. Yeah. That it turns me off of it in the first place. Who's the leftist in general? Like, they, they are self loathing a lot of times. Not the traditional uh, liberal, right? Yeah. But the, the modern-day leftist, mm-hmm. the SJW type, the ones that are leading the charge, the ones that have reinvented climate change. I don't know if you noticed, but just in the last two months since we started really kind of amping up the, ne- the new election cycle and all these people are coming in and stuff, they've really revamped this climate fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like these motherfuckers, their number one goal is control. They hate, uh, they hate people. It's like t- uh, Theodore Kaczynski talked about. In the, uh, what was it? Industrial society and its future. Yeah, the leftists that he mentions in there. Like, they are so weak that they have to champion these causes. They want to control everything, right? Because they don't have any control over themselves. Yeah. That type of thing. They want to slave us all, you know? You're not mad at me, you're mad at your dad. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just... Just, like I just say, I don't ever want to consider myself a denier. Yes, the climate changes. Now, I'm going to... I'm not going to get on that bandwagon that just says, well, the climate always, ch-. like, yeah, the climate does always change, but I think something's going on. Yeah. I mean, but it's also, it's just not what they're, I mean, we've already, that's not our fault. Like, well, not to the I, point of us not, being taxed. Yeah. 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 It's and that's fucking thing. Like, moved into, herded into mega cities. Should we move away from fossil fuels? Probably. Well, that's hilarious too. The uh, green, the new green deal. They wanted to have a nationwide infrastructure boost with uh, electric car charging ports. Mm-hmm. Right. The government wants to act as the benevolent orchestra to get companies to do what needs to be done, so everyone can have a electric car. Right. Yeah. The electric power that comes from those goddamn charging plants is from coal burning. Yeah, which means we need to change the whole. It's not just a matter of changing, like, us driving electric cars. It's a matter of uh, changing how we get the energy in the first place. Mm-hmm. And the crazy part is there's so many ways we can get it that aren't, like, crazy and they're, they're moving away from it. Like, nuclear energy <sighs> is not our enemy. Well, I think uh said it best. We need to invent new ways of energy that haven't been invented yet. <laughs> that's part of the New Green Deal. Oh, that's great. <laughs> It's great to know that, like, oh, like you know, it's like the fucking underpants dome theorem. Yeah. Step, step one, one, acquire the underwear. Step two, question mark and awkward stares all around the room. Step three, profit. There you go. Yeah. I mean, if you're not going to get, like, you can't just say that. There is a like, and I'm not touting <laughs> nuclear energy here. There is a readily available option. You just want to live in the Fallout universe. I know what it well, is. Well, <laughs> even then, if there's a part of me that does. It still wouldn't be that bad because, no. like, here's the thing: they just need to figure out right away. 
Radix. And I'm, you know, I'm all the way on board. You know, here's the thing. I, you know what I blame? I blame the Simpsons because they have painted nuclear energy as just this terrible, terrible thing. Well, so did Fukushima. But that yeah, was, but, okay, here's the thing about Fukushima, man. They build it on a fault line. Well, here's the thing. All of Japan's a fault line. You know mm-hmm. what? If they wanted to go ahead and just keep burning coal because they didn't want to avoid, you know, having another meltdown, you know what? If they're the one country in the world that's going to burn coal, fuck it. Because you know what? There's plenty of places other than the world that aren't right on a fucking fault. I mean, it'd be like us building a fucking nuclear power plant on a San Andreas fault. What's the, uh, isn't there somewhere near us? To the north, where they just they they take like the spent fuel rods and they put them under the ground. Yeah, there's like a facility. Like they, they that's the thing. Like they're like, well, it, it creates like waste, and well, yeah, it does create some waste. It's like but, a constant ground fire. Well, there's a facility I know that it's like a mile under the ground. They just take the shit down there, <clears throat> the spent rods, and they put them in there. It's not. Right? I just think that the technology is probably on point, and it's vastly important, and we should use it. We just haven't quite figured it out. As far as, like, maybe we should, like, shoot it in space or something? Well, see, that's... Well, Make it someone else's problem? See, that's the thing. Like, right? if if we invested more in nuclear energy, even safer options would become readily available as time went on. It's like throwing plastic in the ocean, except it's infinite instead of small. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm just... There's got to be better ways. <laughs> For sure. There de- there definitely has to be. But I just don't... Don't, uh, don't blame me. Don't blame Daddy Bison. You know? Cow farts. Give me a goddamn break. Yeah. Maybe that's why all the Mandela effect shit's happening, because 2011 came, we all drowned, Al Gore was right. Yeah. This is a different reality. Yeah. Or we're in hell. Now they're trying to save this one. Yeah. I don't believe that, though. Well, I did see a story from New York where a guy uh, had broken into an apartment, killed a female, stabbed her, she's pregnant, Mm -hmm. uh, stabbed her in the stomach and in the neck a bunch of times, Mm -hmm. and only got charged with one murder because of the new abortion law. Yeah. So that's good. I mean, yeah, yeah. babies are the problem. Yeah. If you just kill all the babies, we need the less. climate will stop changing. Well, see, I'm just glad that they finally like just come out with like how they really feel about things because you know, like before it's like, well, we need to stop this and stop that, and it always felt like failed kind of like democide. Yeah. Now it's just like regular democide out in the open. Yeah. You know? That's fine. I'd rather you tell me what you're gonna do. That's fine. Yeah. It surprised me, too. A lot of people I talked to, at least within the Factory of Sadness, that I thought were listeners or whatever, they'd never heard of the Georgia Guidestones. So I'd like to take it, an opportunity to blast this out to the tens of thousands of you that are listening right now. Stop the episode. Go to Google Images. Look at the Georgia Guidestones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> figure figure that out. Either it's the longest troll in the course of human history. Or somebody was doing something nefarious. I think we did an episode on the Georgia Guidestones, did we, did. we not? Yeah, I mean, we've mentioned it a number of times. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that haven't had the time. Maybe they were driving. Maybe they were making love. Maybe, I don't know what all you do. What do you do when you listen to Bones and Nose podcast? I tell you what, I don't normally think about the Georgia Guidestones when I'm making love. But so, sometimes. I'm not every other person, so maybe they do. Makes me grain it hard. Ma- well, as I say, maybe that's the thing, you know, like sometimes, you know, people have their thought that, that keeps them from... uh Coming. Ending early. Yeah. You know? Bones maybe maybe prevents. that's what maybe I should try it out and be like, oh, Georgia Guidestones. Yeah. Maintaining a human population under <laughs> yeah, here yeah. it is. World government. Mm, yeah. World religion. Mm. That keeps me going just for just just a little bit longer. Yeah. I get yeah. it. But that's okay. But yeah, just check that out. That, I mean that Agenda twenty one, which changed to Agenda twenty thirty because they, they failed, luckily. <laughs> uh for now. For now, but but uh I tell you what, yeah, go ahead and check out Suspicious Observer. He's got a lot of good stuff, and he's way smarter than us. He deserves to be followed by everyone. He also, we need to do an episode on this, because I don't fully understand it, and it's exciting. It's alternative physics models. Yeah. He subscribes to the Electric Universe Theory, mm-hmm. which at the time, it's slowly gaining a lot of important traction. Mm-hmm. Uh, it basically disproves all this dark matter. And all this other stuff. It's really neat. So hmm. we'll have to do that an extra show on that one. That would be cool. But definitely. He definitely subscribes to some stuff that uh, is is becoming mainstream, more mainstream, and he's on point. His app, it, it's funny because before he had that paper put out about the disaster prediction with the solar ejections, uh, everybody was like, there, there's no relationship between volcanic or uh, earthquake activity with the sun. You know, probably the same crowd that used the, the volcanic stories and blamed man-made global warming. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he 
with 80 or 85 percent accuracy i mean that's like you said it's better than a fucking weather forecast mm-hmm. so yeah check out suspicious observers he's a good guy shout him out i think he's got a patreon too if you guys yeah. are feeling you know giving giving you know who else has a patreon the buzz it does podcast the buzz it does podcast i'm going to Download all of our episodes tonight. Okay, so, <laughs> ambition. I don't know what the uh, what the date what the date is, but this might be the last episode you hear on this feed. Uh, if you mm. can't find us anymore, just research Podbean. Just look up the Bones and Toes podcast in your search bar again of the same pod feed or the podcasting app, and it'll pop back up. Yeah, it's that we're, easy. We're just switching uh, services, yeah. hosting services. It's a little bit cheaper, and they have. Excellent RSS information. Mm-hmm. Let us know how many of y'all there is. Yeah. Because fucking Squarespace. I, I mean, them. don't get me wrong. Squarespace, for what it was worth. <coughs> yeah. They did, did it. They did us do. right. But I like yeah. to know more between 2,400, 2,600 downloads a day and then 10,000 a month. Like those numbers aren't, they're not even close. Yeah. Uh, I, know so, there, I know there's a lot of you though. Yeah. I'm inside you right now. And we're apparently your dirty little secret. You feel it. We don't, we don't hear too much from all of you, but we know you're there because <laughs> we see the downloads, motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. I know what you're doing, but uh, no. So I guess that wraps up the show. Go check out the Suspicious Observer. I think he's a really good listen. Yeah, um, it's a savage. Hey, you could check us out on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram.com forward slash Bones and Tubs. Yeah, and, YouTube uh, YouTube.com forward slash Bones and Tubs Show. I think. Yeah. Check us out there. You can just type in Bones and Tubs. It usually finds us pretty quick. It's going to pop up. Yeah, it's going to pop up. Um, go over to our Patreon, like we said before. We're on Pornhub, too, but I've only put yeah. like one video on there. Once <laughs> once we switch over to Podbean, we're probably going to be up in those Patreon things. Yeah. So that if you're a Patreon, you're probably going to get a lot more content. Yeah. Because we're going to be doing... We're hammering out the psychic details required to do our little drive talks. Drive talks and road shows. Road head shows. and That'll that. only be ex- Patreon exclusive content. Yeah. And only for maybe a dollar a month. I think, yeah. A dollar a month. A dollar a month to get an extra show. Yeah. You Which know? is a lot. And you think about it, too. You'll get your fucking Bones and Tubs... Uh, original fucking shout out on the airwaves. Yeah, for only a dollar a month, Sheesh. and the extra content. You yeah. know, I mean, that a dollar. Give me a fucking break. That's a pretty good deal, if you ask me. It's weird. I listened to the newest episode of Joe Rogan with Sam Harris, and they were talking about the problem of funding. Mm-hmm. Like some people, podcasters, whatever they use advertisements. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. We don't want to either. No, but honestly, we, but we might. I because mean, down the road. I mean, yeah. <coughs> it just depends. The Patreon thing is. Slow burner. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people, they it, when they see the Patreon, they th- it, like, triggers something in their brain. Mm-hmm. It's like the same thing as giving money to homeless people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like we're on the street begging for Tree Fitty. Yeah. When, in fact, well, it's like the new way of the, the payment changes hands. So instead of selling your intention to companies that we don't give a fuck about, yeah. we're just asking for a little contribution in our hat. I mean, little did you know that we were a 30-foot-tall dinosaur from the Cretaceous oh. period. I need about tree fitting. But uh, with that, I think that ends the show. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for listening. We're glad you went along this ride with us. We hope you tune in next time. For sure. And uh, we'd like to thank Ryan Simpson for letting us use his music on the show. Love you, Ryan. You got any musicians out there want their music on the show? Go ahead and send it to us. We're more than willing to help you out. Yeah. We uh, uh, had a Flat Earth rapper. So, I mean, we'll put anybody on here. Yeah, we'll put, I mean... Don't say anybody. Within reason. I ain't doing no goddamn furry abortion band. Well, see, I was thinking that, or like, you know, like some... See, you went the, you went to the left, I'm going to the right, and I was oh, going to say yeah. like some band named like the Stormfront or something like that. You just like, name, name them the... Yeah, as I say, talk about the JQ and shit. <laughs> I might have to delete that. <laughs> you might have to. All right, thank you all for listening. We hope you have a good week, and we hope you tune in next time. We love you. We really do. Say it's time to move You have the proof
off you go into that mystery your dreams in tow to claim your destiny Come